everyone, welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be making a basket out of baling twine. So I've got a popcorn bowl right here. This is going to be used as a mold to help shape my basket. I've got some other colors here. Now I have cut 12 strands right here and these are going to be cross hatched together. Now when you get to the very edges of your bowl, you want to make sure that you have an uneven or an odd number of strands because as you tie it off, those uneven uh, numbers are going to make it so that you can loop and finish off the rest of your bowl. So you can either add a strand in when you start with an even number, or you can cut one of the even strands off. Now I'm going to be doing a cutting of the end off. So right now I'm starting with 12. And I'm going to go ahead and try and smooth off my bowl as much as possible. Now my ends I need to be much longer than the edge of my bowl because that's what I'm going to use to finish everything all off. And uh, you want to try and match up these ends as best you can so they're about the same width. So that's going to be really, really tricky once you get started that um, you want to have enough room, you know. <laughs> Alright, so I've got my crosshatch section, and I've got my other bands of baling twine handy. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. Now you want to make sure that you have six going one way and six going the other way. Um, again, you want to make sure that things are uneven and staggered, because that will allow you to put another piece of strand onto this one. And we're going to melt it with the candle, so that's why you need a candle handy. So your straight edge is going to be a support while your joint is right there instead of having two joints in the same spot and then you might break your basket. And we don't want that. So I have an uneven um, end right there. I'm going to go ahead and just get started. I'm going to bring one half of it underneath and just kind of get ready to start weaving my basket. So what I'm going to do is take my most outside edge which is right here. I hope you can see this because this is going to be a little bit tricky because these little slippery guys like to move around on me. So I've got this in this very center. Got it folded over. My first thatching. So I'm going to take my outside edge and come over. So this one is going to come underneath. So now this one is my outside edge. This one right here. So I'm going to take it, come over the top, and take my other one, my under strand, and come underneath. So the one edge that is under your thatching is going to be the one that's going to come over your next side. So under, over, under, over, under, over. So you want to make sure that you twist your thatching in the same direction every time because this is what's going to secure your pieces together. All right. So I've got my first batch done. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to repeat this two more times. So I want to have a good solid middle piece there. So outside comes over, outside comes over. Outside comes over, then outside comes over. Got that twice through. I know these pieces just like to slide around. It makes it so hard to work with sometimes. Right. There we go. Outside comes over. Outside comes over. So you're always twisting in between. So I've got this edge, twist, so there you go. I'm almost done with having three bands on every single piece. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and check it, see how it's forming out. I'm liking how it's going so far. Now I need to start separating my strands in two. 
So I've got my strands here. I'm going to try and smooth this out as best as I absolutely can. And looks like these two pieces are going to be next. So again, twisting in the same direction. I'm going to go ahead and check this one. It looks like these two are going to be next. So again, twist your thatching. Make sure those two are flat and twist. So there I've got three strands or three groups right there. I'm going to try and make sure that these stay even throughout my work. So I don't want anything to have any puckers and bubbles or anything like that. We want to make sure that this stays as nice and as flat as possible. So it looks like these two strands are next. So I'm going to take my orange strands and twist. I'm going to find which next two strands are handy. It looks like these two. So I'm going to go ahead and twist. And this one looks like it's next. So I'm going to go ahead and do another twist. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I get a ways down my basket. So I'll be back when I, in a few minutes I guess, when I'll start having to reduce them and then make these strands into uneven numbers. Alright, so we'll be back in a few minutes as I'm working down this bowl. I'll see you soon. Alright everyone, so I have come to my uneven end where I've got a little bit of strand left on one side and a longer strand on the other. So now I have got to add another strand in. So I'm going to go ahead, I think I'm going to start on this strand, seal it back up with maybe a blue. So I'm going to go over here to my candle, take my ends and very carefully burn both ends. I'm going to go ahead and kind of stick them together. And that's how you form a new joint. Now, if you are working with sticks or anything like that, all you'll want to do is just add in your extra strand into your already existing pattern, and you'll just weave it through and uh, leave an extra little bit sticking out. Because when you do the end of it, your secondary strand is going to be your stabilizing one and it will secure that add-on like this one into place. So you can either uh, stick your ends together and glue them or you can just leave it open and just start adding in your extra strand. So now this is where I'm going to start getting that color change and I'm really excited to see how this is going to start going. You can do this with jute twine if you want to as well. All right, so I'm just going to keep continuing the same way I did and just keep twisting. So I'll see you when I get a little bit further along. And there is my joint. I'm just going to go ahead and keep going. Now this is going to add a really colorful pattern. Alright, I'll see you back in just a few minutes. Alright, so now I've got the whole base of the bowl covered. Now I'm going to just examine my work and see the ends that are kind of closer together. So this side, the strands have gotten a little bit close, and this side, the strands are a little bit further apart. That is okay, because this is where the next section is going to be really interesting. So now I'm going to start doing every one in between each and every strand. So I'm going to go ahead and start separating it out. And again, always twisting in the same direction. And this is going to start filling in all of those gaps. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to start pulling and folding these edges down. And that's going to start creating the walls of my basket. So I'm going to go between every strand. Again, same twisting, same direction. I'm going to make sure I've got every little strand now. 
Yep, and keep those nice and tight. Try and keep them all about the same length if I can. Not starting to fill in really nice. And as I get to this side that's a little bit closer, I'm going to go ahead and cut one of these strands off. And it looks like the lucky winner might be one of these two bands. So I'm going to keep folding it down, take just a single strand and twist, secure that into place, that one, twist, secure that into place. I'm just going to keep going and do the same technique for every single one of those. Outside strand, there we go. Now which one looks like it's the closest? I think probably This lucky son of a gun over here. All right, so this is where if you start with even ends, you can either add in an extra strand and just kind of go in between one of these weavings and just make your extra strand where the spot looks like it might be spacing out the most. But in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and cut one of these off. Now I have uneven numbers. So every single strand now is, instead of being six and six, now I've got six and five starting with this one. So I'm going to keep going, keep weaving, just like I normally would. And start folding the edges downwards over the bowl. So it's going to start rounding out about now. You can kind of tell that there's the walls of my edges just starting to form. I'm going to keep twisting and keep going. I want to make sure I keep twisting in the same direction between every little strand. I want to make sure all those Kind of stay close together. Oh, I actually did two strands in that one. So come back. Makes it kind of harder to see when I'm doing this towards you guys instead of towards me. I'm make sure all those spaces try and stay about the seam if I can. There we go. I'm really liking that. I'm just kind of pressing down with my hand and kind of cupping it to help get that some shape. I'm going to go ahead and add another strand in. I think I'm going to go ahead and put blue on this orange one. And that's why you keep a watch out with your candle. It's just what I did just now. First time I did that though. I guess it could be worse, right? <laughs> and that looks like it's going to be the easiest to do. I'll find my strand here. Go ahead and pull everything out of the way. Bring my candle over a little bit closer. Take my two ends and burn them a bit. Hopefully they'll start to melt and fuse together. You want to be careful not to burn yourself because melted plastic is very hot. <laughs> I know, it's kind of a no-brainer to say that. Alright, that looks good. I'm happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and bring this back to my bowl. Set my candle maybe a little further off to the side. I'm going to keep going. So I'll be back as soon as I start doing some more bending and shaping of the bowl. See you in a few minutes. All right, so I'm getting down right to the edge. I've got a little bit of more weaving to go. But what I'm going to do is make sure that I push everything up close towards the center 
And if I have one side that looks a little longer than the other, I can either take this and kind of crunch it, just kind of slide it up. And other spots that look a little smaller, I can bring those down. I can just adjust it from there, give it a little shake, see if my centers are all lining up. I can tug my pieces as I go to help make sure that those stay nice and straight. I want to make sure that I have everything exactly where I need it so when I get ready to finish this up I don't have to adjust this a whole lot. Now if you have one side that's got a little space this came off the bowl a little bit there but it's nice and snug there you can actually take like a crochet hook and pull those and snug those down but you'll have to do that as you go otherwise you're going to be stuck pulling out an area here and have to go around many 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 times to get that twist out or get that little bubble yeah right there out of it so it'll be nice and flat with the bowl but um, I'm pretty happy with this so I'm going to keep going got my twisted section here close to my candle and uh, I'll just keep going it's almost done all right so now that I've got the bulk of my weaving done I'm going to go ahead and check my work I want to make sure that it's about the same length on every side. If it's a little bit short, I can always push it down like this towards the edge. And if it's a little bit too close to an edge, I can always scrunch it down on one side. Just want to make sure that I get my shape kind of how I want it. So I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of pull it around, adjust it a little bit. This side feels like it's a little bunchy. So I'm just going to kind of just give it a little bit of a reshaping. Alright, that feels pretty good. Really happy with that. I'm seeing some little pieces of string hanging out. Go ahead and cut those little bits off. Make sure it's nice and smooth. I guess you can say I'm trimming the wild hairs. <laughs> Checking for any spots where the burned ends might be coming undone in joints. I want to make sure those stay together. I'm really liking that. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip over my bowl and take my metal bowl out. I'm just going to look at it, check the inside. It's been pretty good. And I've already burned the ends, so that's going to make it really easy to do this next step. Now this is exactly why you need to have uneven numbers around your basket. So I'm going to go ahead, take one strand, bring it on the inside, and fold it over. Bring that strand that I just folded over, just keep going. So as I'm doing this, I'm kind of holding these down with that from my hand there. So over over, over, take the strand that I just pulled over, drop it down, pull it over the next strand. Take the next strand, pull it over, and just keep going. So I want to make sure all those strands are one looped over the other. I'm going to keep going and keep folding down towards the outside. And here's why the odd number is so important. Here's the odd one left out. Now the odd one left out gets to go right under the first one and lock down. Now if I had an even number of strands, I will just have one just sitting out in the middle of nowhere that I can't do anything with. So now that I've got that done, I'll go ahead and examine it one more time. Give it a good look-see. I'm going to go ahead and put my bowl back in here because that's going to help kind of hold those ends down. And I'm going to make a little bit of a space. So where one strand seems to line up with the weaving here, I'm going to go ahead and just make a little bit of room. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pull that up, take my strand with the burned end, and slide it right down there. 
I want to pull it all the way through. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing all the way around. So this strand seems to line up. This one right here lines up with this strand. So I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit of room. Take my strand and tuck it in. Just like that. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and continue this for the rest of the thing, and I'll come back in a few minutes and show you what to do next. All right, so now I've got all my ends tucked in. They're nice and snug, just the way I want them. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my bowl, stick it back inside there, work it around, because I want to try and make sure that my bowl stays the shape and stays as nice and snug as possible. I'm going to go ahead look at my edges. Now this one's kind of wrapped over in another angle. So I'm going to go ahead and take about a thumbnail and just kind of cut it right there by my thumb. I'm going to leave just a little bit of that edge hanging out because as I burn it it's going to kind of tuck up inside of these three weavings that I've got sitting there. I'm going to go ahead and very very carefully burn the ends I'm going to pull that back up inside of itself, and there we go, it's nice and snug. I'll go ahead and work some more spots. kind of did it already in a few other areas. Just burn a little bit of that thumbnail. Try to make sure all the edges stay about the same length. Trim it off, add a thumbnail. Go ahead and very carefully burn it. that sees melts and bring those down over the top of it there and that'll kind of glue it and secure it in place. I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way around the basket. We'll be back as soon as I get all that done. Alrighty, so here we go. Here's the final product. Got all the edges burned. They're tucked under. They're hidden. All the strings are cut off. The edge looks just wonderful. And here we have our very own finished baling twine weaving basket. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, you can come back for more. And uh, we'll have more adventures later on. Bye now.